All right. Um, okay, so uh, this is a work uh, we um, initiated with some discussion with the uh, uh, Christian last month, and uh, when she visited us at Albany, and um, uh, this is more focus on the why precipitation frequency would uh, decrease, uh, uh, we know intensity will increase, but uh, uh, the physical e explanation for uh, the decrease in precipitation frequency is still, in my view, a remain uh, 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 outstanding issue. So uh, most of work was uh, um, uh, done by uh, Jiao Chen, uh, he's a visiting uh, PhD student working with me. Um, over. So uh, just a very briefly, a uh, little bit background. Um, many of you already mentioned that uh, uh, precipitation, in heavy precipitation, will likely increase. Uh, but uh, the light, moderate precipitation will actually decrease. Uh, this is a uh, work by Shiraton. Um, uh, so they are essentially look at a lump of different daily precipitation product um, and uh, uh, try to normalize the percentage change in each category by the uh, global uh, temperature and harmonies. So on this side, this is more like year-to-year uh, -year variations. Uh, on this side, the last uh, uh, color bar represents the CMIP3 model simulated uh, uh, precipitation change. Uh, so this is the long-term force to change. So they, they are not exactly orange to orange uh, comparison, but they are qualitatively uh, consistent. They indicate uh, a large percentage increase uh, in heavy precipitation, but uh, uh, negative or decrease in the moderate to light precipitation uh, events. Um, uh, we published last year a paper try to propose a mechanism um, for the uh, decreasing precipitation events, the frequency. Uh, this is more uh, upon the energy constraint or on water budget constraint. So we think uh, in the future warmer climate, each storm will likely consume 7% uh, or more uh, moisture from the atmosphere. And since the surface supply of moisture is based on the uh, evaporation change. And that is uh, controlled by uh, surface energy or atmosphere energy uh, uh, balance change. So uh, the, the replenish supply of this extra uh, com depleted moisture will likely take a little bit longer because uh, this percentage change are not the same. That means there will, might be a little bit longer dry spells and in fact, when we analyzed the Connors wolf simulation, we did uh, find an uh, increase in the dry spells between uh, indi individual storms. So that seems to be uh, a reasonable uh, 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 process, but uh, we did not go to actual, uh, like uh, uh, a thermodynamic uh, process, like what really inhibit uh, convection happens. Uh, uh, in fact, um, um, uh, Christine uh, and the colleagues in their paper, they uh, examined some of the thermodynamic uh, environmental changes. And, uh, uh, and as we all know, uh, in the warmer uh, moisture climate, the convective potential energy cape uh, will increase, in particular during the warm season. Uh, this is what happened in the wolf corner simulation. But also, they have also found that uh, the seen uh, convective inhibition, uh, um, the negative buoyancy, also will becoming stronger uh, in the future warmer climate. So this is a little bit surprising to some of us. Uh, um, we saw that the, the atmosphere will have uh, more energy, uh, more uh, instability. But at the same time, uh, it could also have a uh, uh, more uh, negative buoyancy to prevent uh, convection happens. So uh, this is uh, from the regional downscale model. So we want to know uh, whether that is uh, happening in the global models of other regions. Uh, so we uh, try to uh, go to, back, well, just back up. 
So uh, <coughs> I'll just uh, refresh your memory how the cape and the scene uh, are calculated. So basically, they are just uh, uh, integrating uh, the uh, difference between the uh, rising parcel, uh, the virtual temperature, and, and difference between the rising parcel and the uh, environment. And the same applies to the same calculation. So on a graphically, you can think of Cape is the uh, positive buoyancy energy, and the scene is the negative buoyancy energy. So the models, so the uh, the Kanes model simulation indicate both this part of negative energy, this area will increase, and this positive uh, buoyancy area will also increase in the future climate. And that's obviously we have uh, implications, in particular this part for uh, preventing some of the convection events from happening in the future climate. Uh, so um, if we look at the the difference between the virtual temperature and the actual temperature it's, uh, in the mean climate is very, uh, the moisture contributes very tiny, less than 1%. However, if you look at the potential changes, uh, let's see. Uh, OK, so all right, so that's the, uh, some background about the Cape and Sink calculations. So we did uh, uh, go back and try to calculate there's the Cape and scene change for the global models. This, we already saw that the CMIP5 model data archive might help, but in terms, it turns out that they are only archived the vertical data, data at the very limited number of uh, the standard pressure levels. So make it is not nearly uh, useful. So we had to uh, go back to uh, find some uh, models data like uh, NCAL CSM model, like they have the archived the daily data at the original model uh, levels. So this allowed us to actually be able to calculate the CAPE. Uh, so this is the uh, future minus present under the high emission scenario. Uh, so this part, let me go. OK, so the first uh, top panel is the uh, calculate CAPE change. So you can see all our uh, uh, positive values. And then in the bottom uh, panel shows the, the future minus current uh, scene changes. So essentially, you can see uh, the scene becoming stronger over essentially all the land areas. Uh, very small change of the ocean. All right. So that's the using calculate using the daily data of uh, temperature and uh, uh, specific humidity from the. Uh, the global model, all right, using uh, uh, 20, is it 20 year data. So calculate for each each day and then average over uh, all the days. Uh, then we actually did some test. In this case, uh, we just add, add the daily, so using the current daily data and add the 20 year mean temperature change at each data point. And then also humidity using the uh, the 7% per, uh, increase per 1 degree, so assuming uh, a constant humidity, all right? So, uh, so we are not using the future temperature humidity profile. We are using the current adding a perturbation uh, based on constant humidity uh, assumption. And this is what I get. So you can see uh, the change patterns are very similar. similar. So it, this indicates uh, the model is actually following uh, very uh, closely to the uh, constant humidity uh, uh, assumption. Um, so, okay. So, what what's the uh, reason behind the cape becoming stronger? All right. So, we I did a, a very simple calculation. So, starting from the cape equation, right? So, we only integrating over the negative buoyancy area, and uh, using some uh, simple uh, uh, values, this should be approximate, uh, uh, equal approximately. So using the 7%, uh, I already showed you for the mean uh, virtual temperature, uh, there are only 1% difference between the virtual temperature and the uh, air temperature. But if we are looking at the future changes, uh, there's actually substantial uh, differences between the air temperature change and uh, uh, virtual temperature change 
just due to the uh, this um, uh, humidity change. So uh, that means <coughs> the larger uh, this term could be uh, 10 to 25 percent larger uh, on the same temperature inversion conditions. Uh, when the humidity increases in the future climate. So I think this is one of the uh, basic reasons why we see uh, 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 seen, uh, the, the negative buoyancy increase substantially, because uh, this mainly due to the water vapor increase uh, uh, on the uh, warming uh, climate. All right, so, uh, so to test that, to, to quantify the uh, contribution by the uh, humidity change. So we also did a calculation. In this case, we used the current temperature, but just only changed the uh, humidity using the constant uh, uh, RH. So in this case, there's a node warming, but uh, there's an increase of 7% uh, of increase of water vapor content. You can see a, a cape increase almost everywhere, but you also see substantial increase in the scene, uh, uh, in the in the scene over uh, most of the lows and latitude land, so it lets indicate the change in uh, the increase in uh, uh, water vapor amount is in fact is a major uh, factor for the scene uh, becoming uh, stronger. All right, so that's one point I want to make. Uh, the the next uh, few slides going to show you are uh, uh, some uh, histogram uh, pro, uh, 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 of uh, changes, all right. So the, on the list, look at the okay. So I, you look at I separate we separate into a tropics and the middle latitudes because they are look quite different. So uh, this is the current the mean distribution of the frequency distribution of the scene and the uh, cape. So think of a histogram uh, of list two uh, for list two variables. So essentially, scene and the uh, uh, cape happens mostly uh, on non this corner, low values here. So this is a change. So essentially, in the future climate, you will see uh, less cases where scene is low and the cable is low. But uh, more uh, cases, more uh, conditions with a uh, uh, larger uh, scene, but also larger cape. All right, so this is the uh, tropics. And middle latitude look like quite a little bit different change of pattern, but it's uh, also a switch to a higher scene and a higher cape uh, cases. All right, so, um, okay, so this, now I'm going to look at the, uh, uh, the histogram uh, versus between a scene and the precipitation. So in this case, we are looking at the, the frequency for, uh, for these two uh, variables to happen at the same time. So this is the current distribution, and this is the future changes. So you can see uh, uh, the precipitation events with the low, low scene cases, uh, low, ca low scene uh, uh, conditions are uh, be becoming less, and uh, uh, with the high scene uh, case becoming stronger. All right, so this is the, for the tropics. Uh, similarly, for the middle latitudes, that's the for, uh, uh, for the uh, uh, precipitation versus scene uh, conditions. And I'm going to switch this one. Uh, this, is, this is something, uh, let's see. Now I we extend, uh, tend to let similar plot to uh, uh, just look at the precipitation frequency uh, distribution as a function of uh, concurring uh, cape and the scene. All right, so this means when you have a sin uh, is low and the cape in this range, you have a much uh, more frequent precipitation happening. All right, so this is a pre precipitation here divide, uh, de defined as the mini, uh, daily uh, precipitation exceeding one millimeter per day. So all, all types included. And this is the current uh, frequency, and this is a future change. This, this says that uh, in the future climate, uh, precipitation will become in, uh, less frequent for, for this condition, for low cape and the low scene, but there will be more frequent precipitation events for higher scene 
in the lower, uh, lower uh, higher cape, right, for the tropics. A uh, little bit slightly different region, but also shifted to this way. All right, so, um, but that pattern is mostly actually happens for the light precipitation. So if we define a uh, precipitation less than say five millimeter per day as light precipitation, uh, um, uh, then uh, this pattern is, you can see uh, this is almost similar, very similar to the the previous slides I showed you earlier. So this tells us that uh, the decrease in precipitation frequency is mostly due to a reduction in the light precipitation that concurs. So this is the climatological uh, uh, frequency for light precipitation. It tend to happen mostly in this corner, low thin and the low cape. All right? And uh, in the future, uh, that part of the condition will decrease, that part of the events will decrease. Instead, uh, many of uh, those events will move towards the higher scene and the higher cape. All right, so uh, uh, that's, uh, let's see, uh, it's the same as summary, okay. Um, okay, so we also separate, uh, I'm sorry, ignore this one. So this is, uh, uh, we also, uh, look at the same frequency change for moderate precipitation and the heavy precipitation. Right, so moderate precipitation change patterns, uh, frequency change patterns as a function of cape and the thin also shows uh, this type of uh, 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 shift to uh, away from the low uh, thin and low cape to higher values. Uh, and uh, for heavy precipitation, you can see uh, it's almost uh, universally increased this little bit decrease over here uh, towards the higher cape. Uh, it always happens at the low scene conditions. All right, so uh, just to uh, summarize a few key points, I want to emphasize this is still ongoing work. We are still trying to um, uh, uh, digest some of the results. Uh, so basically, future scene and the cape would both increase over land. Uh, we also look at uh, mostly focus on summer because that's where it's the strongest signal. Uh, and uh, these changes <coughs> are very close to uh, the values you would get when you're assuming a constant uh, uh, let humidity change. All right? uh, and uh, we also uh, show that the, the increase in water vapor content uh, is a major contributor for that scene uh, becoming stronger all right? uh, in the northern hemisphere land. And, uh, uh, so obviously, when you have a increased the negative buoyancy, it will likely to uh, suppress some of the uh, convective events and uh, allow the cape to accumulate to higher levels. We think that uh, uh, is a very important process. But the future uh, precipitation events, they tend to happen from uh, towards move away from the low scene and low cape towards higher scene and the higher cape conditions. And finally, we think uh, the decrease in the low C and the low Cape conditions, uh, which corresponds to the low f light precipitation uh, uh, events, uh, decrease in such conditions is the main uh, cause for the decrease in the light in the light precipitation events, and also because that's dominate the total precipitation event. So that's also uh, actually uh, 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 explained why the Actual, uh, the total precip precipitation uh, frequency would uh, uh, decrease. Thank you very much. This two, right? Let's see. Um, yeah, so those regions of yellow. Yeah, I, I, you, you see, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I think this is most coastal regions. See, see here. Uh, this uh, mostly like Asia, South Asia. Hmm? 
Oh, 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 this is no Latin raspberry. This is also different. All right. But yeah. Really like I, I just wonder if over land that breaks down because of soil moisture changes, I guess. Yeah. I, if, if the net humidity actually changes, then you certainly going to change the buoyancy. All right. All right. Can I, uh, Very quick. Well, just a rapid comment. You have to be careful because of the land, of the summertime continent, the lunar cycle has really tremendous impact on the sin and shape. So you have to look beyond climate model to understand those changes. And of course, the soil moisture system effects and low level humidity is important for shape and sin. And so I think that's a very good Okay. Uh, Well, I, I think just based on this comparison, I would think uh, uh, this basic uh, thermodynamic process account a lot of, but obviously, the certain regions, how the process can be important. Right, thanks.